Okay, that's what I was getting more well, hyped for. We got Jinx. <laughs> I from mean, Arcane. Not in this game. Oh, from Arcane? Yeah. Oh. That's Jinx from Arcane. Uh, that's this... powder. <laughs> Wait, spoilers. <laughs> um, anyways, there's no surprises here. We, we call this shot, you know, because there are literally two videos we just had play of Luger talking about this and talking about bottom lane matchup yep. and talking about uh, the Jinx specifically. So no surprises thus far that they invest all their bands into bottom lane and then first pick the Jinx. Uh, closer on Lee Sin, though. This, okay. this is definitely a formidable opponent. He, especially if you remember back to finals as well, has had so many strong Lee Sin games. People often over-focus on the Viego from him because, it, let's be honest, it, it, it it's creates- It's worthy of some focus. It, it, yeah, it's worthy of some focus and it creates the most kind of YouTube highlight stretches. But is Lee Sin also incredibly threatening and his ability to create early game advantages for 100 Thieves is one of the most critical parts of when this team is looking in championship form. Well, hey, we were conveniently talking about Viego, and there he is locked in on the opposite side here for CLG. They're also going to pick up the Tom Kench there in the support role. When I see something like Elise in, the ability to displace immobile carries specifically like a Jinx is very scary. Having something to be able to keep her a little bit safer could go a long way. Tom Kench is pretty good at that. Yeah, Tom Kench has a super high priority right now. After the last rounds of buffs, he's so tanky, uh, quite strong in lane as well. You just have to remember when you're going for trades with people or you're trying to catch someone, always throw your Q first to land the slow, then W. Right. Uh, because if you just try and raw W, it's really difficult to hit people unless you're coming out of fog of war, out of a brush. So uh, once everybody <laughs> reminded themselves of that combo, this, this champion jumps back into priority. Yeah. Well, talking about priority, Ari is one of those champions we have been seeing a lot more of ever since her little bit of a mini rework. We'll get to see another performance on her today. It'll be Abadaga piloting that one here for 100 Thieves. Second phase of the bands rolls hmm. out, and the name of the game is the Solo Lanes, as Zillion is banned out by 100 Thieves and Jace banned out by CLG. Yep, CLG having the previous Zillion game. They want to lock that one out. Honestly, too, I think a lot of people are going to be looking uh, at Abba to see if uh, if he can return to the heights uh, that he had when he first joined this 100 Thieves roster. Ari is definitely a strong champion when paired with Lee Sin to be able to do that, yep. to be able to showcase his prowess. So definitely going to be a, a strong area here for 100 Thieves. I think locking mid-jungle uh, strong duo like that in the top three is a strong move. And then trying to ban out a couple of the answers here. They fall off the Zillion ban with the Vex. Um, which is quite good into things like the RA, like the LeBlanc. Well, the Ren Renata Glass. Glass, I, I, her, I just call her Renata. I don't know how to say her last Yeah. Name. Renata is banned away as the final ban of the draft here for CLG. It's funny because they sent out an email and they're like, okay, this champion, you need to say the full name. Renata Glass. It's it's an entire, it's like, it's her entire identity. And everyone's like, ah, I don't think that's going to last long. <laughs> well, <laughs> people like to shorten names. So I also am with you. I'm just going to call her Renata. Uh, but the one point I was going to pull, pull out is that I've watched multiple games of Huhi in Champions Q playing this champion. Mm -hmm. And both times that I watched it, it was with an Aphelios and they dove bottom lane early on and they were able to have bottom lane pressure. So it's actually a really intelligent ban and some scouting from CLG to ban away specifically from Huhi, who's been putting right. time in it in a fairly competitive setting. Right, it's not like Champions Q is giving these guys the opportunity to practice these things that you would want to play on a stage, like just because it has more coordination, because it is that higher level of game. But hey, if you can't have the new hotness, why not go for the old one? Thresh of Felios <laughs> is a time-born uh. combo that has been used time and time again, and that's what 100 Thieves will be piloting into the bottom lane here in this one, as we also have two tried and true solo laners here for CLG, Victor and Nar, locked in to round out the comp. Okay, so CLG are going very stock standard, you know, Jinx and Victor hard carry games. It's trying to set up a strong front line for them to team fight with. Um, Contracts is going to be the wild card here on the Victor, on the uh, Viego, which, by the way, Tom Kent is actually quite strong with melee carries too, mm -hmm. and champions like Viego that greatly benefit from just a small time period of being saved and being able to bridge the window to your next reset. Yep. So he doesn't always have to babysit Luger, but Luger probably will 
uh, you know, be the obvious main carry later on. Meanwhile, 100 Thieves, they lock into Tryndamere for Someday oh once again. Oh boy, we've seen this before, Kobe. I've cast every single one of Someday's Tryndamere games, and I am, I am always impressed with it, even in their loss. So I have full confidence here in the in the last pick for 100 Thieves for Someday. Let's see if he can actually pull it out and have a similar effect in the split push in this game. What's going on? Jake from State Farm. The perp just confessed. I think. I don't know. Uh, what? Oh, can't afford streaming anymore, so here we are. Oh, don't give up what you love. State Farm has options to personalize your policy so you get a rate that fits your budget. Oh. That's great. Mm -hmm. The subtitles would be nice. For surprisingly great rates to fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. And hey, we're talking about Someday and his power on the Trindamere. I think that's even more highlighted in a game where you're expecting so much attention to be on the bot lanes. Like, you know, hearing from the players talking about, hey, win bot, win the game. Well, if junglers and mid laners and bot laners, support laners, all these other laners are looking on the wrong side of the map if you're a Trindamere because you just want to be having your own fun all the way up there in top. It's kind of funny how one of the classic complaints of top laners is that, oh, we're left on an island. You know, we don't affect the rest of the game. But if you're playing Trindamere, you want that. Oh, you're going to <laughs> you're travel like... agent, island vacation, book it. One way, book it. Let's just go have all expenses paid, book it. Exactly. You want to do work up there while everyone else is ignoring you uh, and has googly eyes for the bottom lane, sending all the resources down there so that you can get to work and you can start to create your own advantages. Trinomir players are going into the MMOs. Everybody else is excited for the PvP. They're like, yeah, yeah, I want to show off, show off my skills, do a little player versus player action. Trinomir's like, nope, I'm here to farm 1,000 wolves <laughs> per minute. I'm going to get every single wolf. You ain't touching none of the wolves. They're all mine. Trindamir, the OG PvE. Let's see if Someday can absolutely pressure CLG's top lane to a point where it's got to be answered, or if CLG will be able to play through this bottom lane, have that priority, have that control, rotate first to them crabs, and win the game through that. Jinx and Aphelios, we know they're both so very effective at being able to carry games if they can get ahead, if they can reach that big hyper carry power point. Worth pointing out, Luger does have cleanse as opposed to the heal of FBI. The cleanse is going to be very important against both the Thresh hook in lane, as well as those hooks and the Ari charms in the team fights as we move forward. Despite the fact that Luger takes cleanse, Poom still goes for ignite. Sometimes we see the support switch over to the heal in a situation like this, but both supports still going to be having the ignite here in this one, especially if you're expecting things to get bloody early. I like it. Yeah, and and, and, and Luger definitely has to also worry about Abadaga roams coming from the RE later on as well. So having multiple combo breakers of Tom Kench ultimate and cleanse, uh, definitely going to be some good safety for later on. Looks like they do get the early push on the bottom side as well. Boom, moving up. He's still got two charges to execute one of these melee minions. Yep. And boop, there it is. How many licks to the center of a melee minion? One. And boom, <laughs> we'll pick that one up nice and easy for Luger there. But now he's going to get flayed back, who he and FBI putting a couple shots into him. But overall, nothing too crazy. Just little auto attack trades back and forth here at level one, trying to get yourself whatever sort of a small advantage you can. And with CLG hitting level two first, 100 Thieves don't want to be fighting them. I also want to point out the jungle routes here because they are opposite side of the map starts. So Lee Sin going to be heading up towards the top side. We mentioned Sunday and the Trindamir. You want to be able to keep out the outside influences from affecting your lane to get any extra pressure there to allow Trindamir to play aggressively. Yep. Trindamir wants to go for these trades where you you spin in on the Mininar and try and get your crit, right? Uh, you know, charge up your bar uh, for your passive to be able to have your crit chance and then spin in, go for your auto attack trades. But if the opponent jungler is is clearing towards your side or if you don't have vision of them, then it makes it much more risky to play out the lane how you would want to. And yeah. so you generally are going to want to have your jungler clear up towards your side, get your top scuttle crab for you, uh, and try and get you the extra safety that way. Abba also going to uh, hover up to the top side of the map where his jungler is. Meanwhile, it is contracts on bottom half playing to his pushing bottom lane. Yeah, and Poom actually had to flash there as the hook flew out from who he Could have been a pretty bad potential punish. He was close to the turret, could have been pulled in, flayed back, took a turret shot, all sorts of nastiness. So taking that flash away from the CLG support is going to alleviate some of this pressure on the 100 Thieves bot side as things are still pretty even down here overall. Back in mid, Abadaga gets the wave shoved up, thinks about taking a back, but wants to grab, looks like one more wave before he does it. 
Yep, Power Fox out of mana. We'll go back, take his teleport recall. Actually cancels the recall here. So he's sticking around very low mana. Won't be able to join any skirmish if it does pop up. This right. gives Closer the confidence. Okay, I can go for the Squire's Bloom. He got his kind of shallow ward there towards the blue side. Contracts will find it with his control ward though. Uh, it, it's a good job sussing this out. Something I always try and recommend for you know people that are swapping into jungle role is if someone from your from the opponent team was just in your area of the jungle, always assume that they left a ward. One of the most annoying thing for junglers is when other people are coming in and warding your jungle. And so since you see the Scryer's Broom just, plop, uh, just popped, you know that Closer was just there. So uh, he's able to assume, yeah, there's probably a ward in this vicinity and finds it and takes away the extra information. Big wave crashing into the bottom lane, tier one turret here for Luger and Poom to pick that one up. CS looks pretty 100 Thief favored right now, but that wave will of course all be able to go over to Luger if he can last hit him just fine. Abadaga trading here with Palafox, who's still sticking around in lane, still really not any mana to work with. Abadaga has already used his teleport to return back to lane, so that means that Palafox, man, Palafox doesn't even take the recall there. He still stays in lane to yeah. last hit these underneath the turret. Abadaga has his flash. I want to see Palafox's money to see if he's, he's waiting for like a uh, lost chapter or something or Contracts though. Oh, Contracts flashes away, but Closer's still able to read him there with the Sonic Wave. Catches up, beats him up a little bit. Poom was nearby, so they can't chase it any further. Finally, Palafox has to take that recall, go home, make that purchase. You can see the completed lost chapter in the inventory, so I'm guessing that was the reason he was sticking around so long. Yeah, that's exactly what I was uh, mentioning and looking for. And Contracts, he's saved by his bottom lane being able to push in. The yellow ping that went down, was straight from 100 Thieves bottom lane saying, hey, we're on recall timer and Poom is moving up river. Don't over chase him. So it was very close call there for CLG, but they avoid disaster and 100 Thieves will just get the dragon instead of also getting first blood. Nice and early Drake for 100 Thieves here. Six minutes in, they got that ocean under their belt, a little bit of extra regeneration for the laning phase, but here comes the engage. Poom's already ready to go. The flash out from FBI to get over the chompers and not be chain CC'd means he will stay alive and honestly only loses a little chunk of his health. Yeah, I mean, decently effective gank, but offensively blown flashes can be punished just as much as defensively blown ones. So Luger and FBI both now flashless AD carries. Uh, you love to see that as a jungler. You know, there's definitely going to be some possible repeat plays to try and punish either of them. Offensive or defense, if the only thing that matters, the flash <laughs> you know, button don't work, right? The I guy can't press the button. I don't care about your sob story. Why don't you have your flash anymore? <laughs> the the point is, you don't have it. <laughs> yup, that's all that matters, especially for these junglers once they can make those Ooh. plays. Palafox going to face check the brush here. Finds Abadaga waiting for him, but it's Abadaga who's got to be careful. Chaos Storm drops right on top of the two, means Palafox wins out in the trade, uses his ulti to do it. Abadaga's first back into the lane again. The wave will crash into Palafox's turret. Yeah, even with the vision advantage here, that was not great setup for 100 Thieves to be able to have the coordination on the entry from Palafox to punish him there. So it ends up being a health negative trade for them. And, you know, even on ultimates actually used, not too shabby at all for the members of CLG. Luger and Poom CSing decently down here uh, at their turret as well. Even with Closer there, they give some harassment as well. Nicely yeah. traded. Here comes the Ari though. Remember, this is no ult Ari, but that's going to be enough to force him out. Here we go. Closer goes in for the kick. Flash play comes out from who he. It'll be a one for one at the start. But I would assume they could get the second one here. Poom's still alive, still Great has health. the thick skin ready. They're waiting. There's Poom. Nice. nice use of the shield. We'll force Closer back and get the heal out of FBI too. Yeah, really, really nice usage because he wants to get his heal uh, while he still has low health before activating the gray health. but. Can Contracts answer? Looks like... Looks like a yes. There's your heartbreaker. Contracts gonna look for number two. Forces the flash out of Closer, who honestly just stuck around way too long. Contracts makes good on the defense here. CLG and Poom specifically buying so much time there in the overdive from 100 Thieves that they allow their jungle to come down and clean up the extra kill. That is so big for CLG. Now, 100 Thieves go for this, and rightly so, because they have the level advantage. There's no level six on Tom Kench, so Closer goes in, gets the double kick. Palafox, though. Palafox, who he makes the rotation. 
and they get the kill on the enemy mid laner. Meanwhile, Someday was trying to get spicy up here in the top lane, forced the flash out of Jenkins, traded for Someday's own ghost. So that is going to be a cooldown favored trade for Someday. All right, so mid lane priority now really, really big for 100 Thieves because Abe didn't have to use his ultimate to get that pick onto Palafox. He can now push in the wave, get his recall off, go spend his money, and get back out to make an ultimate play. Well, now Luger finding oh. himself in a pretty bad spot, but hey, Poom has him covered. Gets him out of there with the Devour. The shield on Luger, massive there. And lucky for him, his support was ready because that looked scary. This is why you pick Tom Kench. Yep. <laughs> Boom's this is there. Why you do it. They get the save this time around. He got his level six, so he has the ultimate this time, getting him out of danger. It is going to cost another minion wave, though. That's enough damage to Jinx to force the recall and allows Aphelios to push in on a turret. Interesting, too, because 100 Thieves are simultaneously starting up Rift Herald while they make this strong bottom play and get that health advantage. This is going to get them the objective plus pushing in the wave. So they don't lose out anything to CLG in, in, in payment for this play. Really, really nice stuff there from 100 Thieves playing both sides of the map, playing off the successful uh, advantage that they got on bottom side to leverage this Rift Herald without any counterattacks from CLG. All right, talking about Rift Heralds, last game we saw one where TL had to summon it back in their base because they ran out of time. Uh, I just want to ask, in this game, considering things are still very close overall here in the first 10 minutes of play, what is your ideal Rift Herald scenario for 100 Thieves right now? Where do you want to see them focus and set this up for closer to drop? For me, it's mid lane to open up Abba's roams again. We mentioned you know, how important the mid roam for Ari can be, and Victor as a predominant wave player makes it it's difficult otherwise to take down mid turret if you don't have Rift Herald, so uh, that would be my focus. You might also think, hey, Trindomir is a split push champion. Wouldn't you want to accelerate him? But uh, someday should be getting uh, his own leverage in that area. And if you open up the mid lane, having threaten, threatening mid lane roams is actually much more important than having the, the side lane be able to split push deeper. So. Uh, I, I think this is going to be the main goal for 100 Thieves, and you see Closer right now hovering around that area as well. Yup, Closer has made his way in here, but we got both junglers hanging around, and Contract oh, is not hanging around anymore. He got immediately deleted. Absolutely executed there by Ava and Closer. Wow, that was that was with four teammates around too. So that's yeah. why he has the confidence. You know, they're trying to force their way into the the mid brush before Dragon spawns. But because of the skill shot landing here, it's just off the charm. Abe doesn't hit that, then it's actually CLG with priority for setup for Dragon. But Abe does hit those flowers. He does indeed. And now that second Drake goes over. No issues whatsoever for 100 Thieves. 12 minutes into the game, they've got a 2-0 Drake advantage with a 1,000 gold lead. Will be a Cloud Drake here this time around. Which, that could be scary when you're up against something like a Trindomir who just presses his ulti mm -hmm. to survive when he dives, <laughs> and now he's running 9,000 miles per hour chasing down your carries. Yeah, and a champion that is really heavily move speed and cooldown based, <laughs> having a yeah. move speed and, and cooldown uh, dragon, definitely going to be very uh, big. And this is why I was mentioning the Rift Trail probably better use mid, because someday gets two plates by himself. Um, Jenkins is trying to get a cooldown out of him, but might not even get one. Well, we've got a potential fight down here. Oh, Contracts. He uses the unstoppable on his ultimate to get away from a death sentence that otherwise would have been exactly that. Who he's accuracy has been solid. The Thresh performance good so far here in this game. CLG is able to avoid another death for their jungler there on that one. But they do got to be careful anytime he's around, man. Who he knows how to make these plays. Mid lane, there's your Rift Herald summoned up. Now, of course, it will not be able to take the turret on its own. It'll get it down to one plate. That's about all. Yeah, I, I do like it though. Uh, again, because 100 of these are focusing on getting that priority roam from uh, from Abadaga to be able to influence both sides of the map. And the, the picks are definitely going the way of 100 Thieves. It seems more smooth and more calm because of it. Ooh, nice kick with the flash over the wall there from Closer and Jenkins caught off guard, yeeted away from his own turret, didn't have a flash to try to get away from it. Good kill, 100 Thieves. That is exactly why it feels so much more smooth in this game than the previous game, because these advantages are even bigger than we saw in the previous game. And yet, because 100 Thieves are executing these picks 
so much quicker. It feels like it's it's over painlessly. You know, you're ripping the Band-Aid off. Like, oh, <laughs> the Closer and Abe just got a pick in mid on the enemy jungler. Of course they get the dragon, right? Of course they're going to get second dragon. You just, you just kind of chalk that up to an inevitability. But it's only because they're pulling off their picks with such precise skill shots and a precise manner, instantly getting the kill, wasting no time, that the game is going this smoothly and this calmly for the thieves. This is this is them just so cleanly swiping the early game away from CLG here. And it's a lot of these picks, either closer starting them off or closer following up on them that are getting the advantages. Yep, 201 on the Lee Sin has been a part out of three of the four kills for his side. Abadaga doing a good job here. Everfrost very, very good for Ari. Just allows you to set yourself up to hit the charm so easily. Even if you don't hit the root, the slow is often enough. Yeah, I think both mid laners built the correct mythics here. Power Fox knows, all right, the all-in from Ari is what I'm worried about, or the all-in from Trindamir. Yep. Uh, so Crown is, is exactly how you build against those champions, those closer range champions that want to all-in kill you over a short duration so he's got the shattered crown that's the correct purchase from him as you're mentioning for the re the everfrost helping you set up because you've got so much damage on the rest of your team more crowd control means more kill pressure well, talking about kill pressure, the kills are honestly not super high here in this game, but we are seeing those first items be completed kind of all over the board. Gale Force for Trindamir, Hullbreaker up there for Nar, Divine Sunderer on Viego. Bottom side, it's Gale Force versus Kraken Slayer, so maximum DPS option here for Luger, while FBI opts into some more playmaking. I'm glad you transitioned to bottom side, because that's just what I wanted to bring up. All right. For the side of CLG. Let me remind you of uh, how confident Luger was coming into this match versus FBI. Well, never mind. We might have uh, someday stealing the show with his flip push on the Trinomir. level 11 now. Um, deep behind the tower. Oh, wow. They are going in for contracts. 100 Thieves wants this fight, but now they got to be careful because CLG is bringing in the backup. Jenkins teleport will bring him down here to the bottom side river for the fight. But what fight, Kobe? It's already been disengaged. 100 Thieves went in aggressively, and then they got out as soon as things took a turn south. They end up taking the teleport for it, and that's pretty big. It, it is, especially because Someday during that time also finished off the top tower and pushed up to secondary turret. And now Someday is just going to go get an objective himself. This is why in Champ Select, this was our big focus. Yep. Again, another Trindamir game from Someday. He has been massive on this champion. Quietly, since the team does a lot to avoid other resources from their opponents being spent up on him, they allow him to take the tower, to get this side lane pressure. And this time around, he has not gone for the whole breaker. He has the extra kill pressure of rushing into first item Gale Force instead of going second after the whole breaker. So he can even put kill pressure onto a mini Nar. Closer again. Going in, does not try to, well, nope, never mind. I was gonna say he doesn't go for the kick onto Luger, but he didn't even have the cooldown ready to go just yet. I was figuring <laughs> maybe not, just because he's respecting the Tom Kench ulti, but hey, sometimes cooldowns are a little longer early on. And I actually like going for kind of bluff plays like that. Even if you don't have it up right now, Luger had a flash, you know? Jinx flashed down from from the, the move here from 100 Thieves, from Closer. They, they really have CLG on the ropes where all of these ganks, all of these plays from 100 Thieves, take very little time, yeah. extremely efficient, and yet each time you get a very big cooldown or you get a kill, and then you're instantly rewarded with that objective. And hey, talking about objectives, there's your sole point for 100 Thieves 18 minutes into the game. So now, CLG knows they've got five minutes to be ready for a team fight in open ground, and otherwise they give away the Cloud Soul over to 100 Thieves. Otherwise, then you have Cloud Soul Trindamir to deal with. You have Cloud Soul Ari. All of these other problems that can become very serious if your opponents have that much extra movement speed, my friend. Yeah, the problems just keep piling on for CLG. Uh, Mr. Flowers. Rift Hill number two is used to finish off that turret. And now is the very dangerous scenario for them. There's no defenses left to try and set up for that dragon. So it's really hard for CLG to get control of their side waves. Jenkins might not even have control of his own destiny here. He does get away with his life, right. but is gonna lose out on Scuttlecrab as Closer moves over to pick it up. 
it just feels like it's 100 Thieves Rift right now. CLG's doing what they can to try to hold on, but every time we're looking at things, it's who he looking to make a flash play, or it's someday stealing away all of the neutral resources <laughs> in the jungle camps, and it always just feels like 100 Thieves are the ones making a move, and CLG's just scrambling to react. And that's probably the first one that doesn't really land for 100 Thieves, you know? The flash used by who he there to, to try and go for the pick and get in position doesn't amount to, to much at all. I guess it's a it's a decently strong cooldown for for the um, dragon fight as well, you know, with with who he having a lot of threat there. But the timer's actually going to be pretty close on it. Contracts goes for the stun. Oh, nicely turned around by hundred thieves and contracts barely saved by his own support. Boom, doing the work, performing the miracles, bringing his buddy back from the edge of death in that dive. He just dove into that Tom Kent's belly. He was like, please open up, Puma, <laughs> take me home. <laughs> They are able to save him from the kick. And that's, ooh, Closer also nice dodge. But that's what Closer um, was able to do with this flash kick on contracts, getting him under tower. Pulls out two ultimates from the side of CLG. Again, all of these plays that are being pulled off in three minutes of advance of, of the dragon are going to mean that you won't have your flash for that play, yeah. but the champions will have their ultimates back. So the fact that it was a flash kick from the Lee Sin actually means it's a bigger payment from the side of 100 Thieves. It doesn't really matter because they have so much control with all three now outer turrets being taken down. They'll be the ones to be able to set up the vision around this dragon. But Contracts will have a possible flash play. Maybe CLG can pull off some sort of steal on the dragon or or set up the team fight that they're kind of built for. If they can get Jenkins with Meganar ready in the front line, right. then you can have a, a surprise engage, you know, with a Flash Nar play into a Tom Kench W kind of follow up there and Victor Jinx as your carries. You know, at least they're getting to two items on both their carries now here for CLG. Yep, the Lich Bane completed for Palafox's Victor. We've got the Phantom Dancer for Luger's Jinx. So this, I mean, hey, they are going to need everything they've got. They are up against a 3,000 gold deficit. 100 Thieves has built themselves an impressive lead thus far. Someday, still no second item completed for him. You can see Jenkins working towards his Mythic here as well. But maybe those are online in time for the Drake fight. We'll have to wait and see. And again, maybe someday doesn't even bother going to the Drake fight. This is what you buy with this 3-0 Drake control is the ability to say, all right, we can give these away. If we don't feel we need the soul, we can just leave someday in the top side. You must defend it. We don't care. Someday gets turrets. Yeah, they they will have to get a decent amount out of it. One of the, the like, oh, no, it's a first world rich person problem. Oh, we're so far ahead that our opponents have objective bounties. So if our opponents do get that dragon, there's a 500 bounty attached to it also. Right. But if you're, you know, inside the base, uh, you know, plowing away, or if you're getting Take Baron inhibitors, if you're getting a Baron for it, for your, your juiced up Trindomir, then it is still worth it in that case. It's just that CLG are, are ha happy that objective bounties were added to the game, uh, let's say at this point. Well, let's see what they want to put together here in the top side. It's Luger, Contracts, and Poom all up here together. As they have sent Jenkins into the bottom lane, he'll be dealing with Abadaga down there. Closer's just farming up these camps, hanging out nearby. His presence alone should be enough to stop CLG from doing any sort of a dive onto Someday here. Luger just focusing on the turret, trying to clear that away instead. Closer tries to clear out some minions as effectively as he can, but Sonic Wave's not going to do that much. Minions still tanking enough of the turret, and it gives CLG enough time to take the objective down without even needing the PvP element. Who he walking away now as Palafox drops the Chaos Storm to get a lot of damage onto the enemy support, but it is 15 seconds until the Drake spawns, and now there is no Victor ult. Exactly. The timing of this push from CLG, I really like it. They force the tower down with enough time to transition over to this dragon. Soul Dragon here, 400 Thieves, if they can get it. And they're pinging the Baron Flowers. They want to do your trade. They want to give up this objective bounty dragon, the Soul Stopper for CLG. This is two back-to-back -back big plays for the possible comeback here for CLG. Cashing in on two bounties, stopping the soul, and giving up just one secondary outer tower for it. And you can see some assist me pings in the blue color from CLG onto the Baron Pit. They're saying, hey, if they're on this, we have to stop them. But 100 Thieves recognized they didn't have the time to burn the Baron before CLG was able to respond. So instead, they move into the enemy jungle, put down some vision, take away all the camps, and shadow someday at the same time while he takes out that tier two turret there in the top lane. With the tier two turret falling, 
despite the fact that their opponents got the gold from the objective bounty, the gold lead's still around where it was. It's because, oh, never mind, we got a hook on the fish. Okay, Poom is gone. <laughs> there is no way out of that one. Oh, you no! can't use the power to save yourself. Luger has to use both summoner spells to get away from Abadaga, who jumps in for the assassination. And now with the enemy support dead, mm. enemy AD carry no sums, no health. This is the real Baron call from Hunter Thieves. All right, we're about to get dirty, Flowers. Hunter Thieves looking for the turn. Palafox has to flash. There's another flash. CLG, no flash on either one of their carries. Someday's now in a spot to be able to participate in the fight, too. Who he's moving in. They're ready to go. They're looking for more picks. Who he with the flash play. Where's the rest of it going to be? Ophelio Salty hits two, but no purple gun means no CC. Hunter Thieves chase him away and head right back towards that topside river. All right, they're gonna start the dragon again. Lantern used to bring FBI over. He's got red, white guns. This oh, Baron no. is gonna melt. Oh no, it's the Baron taking combo. 100 Thieves are in the pit. CLG's nowhere nearby. They just do not have enough to fight back against it, it would appear. Baron's still at about half HP. All for use, they're gonna go for okay. it. CLG's saying, all right, let's make the call. Let's go in, let's fight for this. Contract's coming up now quickly, but the Baron's already been secured. Who he buying some time with a stasis? He will surely die. FBI and Closer get back out over the wall. Abadaga trying to get away now too. Throws out the charm, has more ulti charges to continue his own retreat. So 100 Thieves take Baron for only the cost of their support. Yeah, that's definitely a win for 100 Thieves there. They return right back to it after getting the pick, started up again, burning it down with FBI's Aphelios. And although they do have to expend the flash on their Aphelios in addition to giving over that one kill, this Baron buff plays right into Trindamir's game, right into Someday's alley here. He's gonna go straight to bottom side. They can 4-1 split push, they can 1-3-1 one, one split push. They want to get as much out of this Baron reward as possible. Two minutes on that timer. And PoE has unleashed teleport for Ari on top side of the map as well. So you can get all three lanes pushing as long as Huhi on this Thresh has good positioning well behind FBI to keep him safe in mid lane. They should be able to play the entire map. Abadaga with that Rapidon's death cap second item on the Ari. He is looking to blow some people up here with this one. Closer and someday moving into the enemy jungle to steal away the red buff. Keep that one off of Luger. Still a little bit shy of two minutes on the Baron. Plenty of time for this pressure to manifest into a big lead for the side of 100 Thieves. Closer who he and FBI pushing up mid. Side lanes occupied by Someday and Abadaga. Someday will be pushing towards that tier two in the bottom lane. The tier two in top side's already gone from his earlier push. So Abadaga's job is just to get these minion waves pushing forward, provide pressure, and stay safe. Exactly. Highlighting there in the mid lane as well, the position of Huhi. That's what you're talking about. Just keep him well behind the Aphelio, so you always have a lantern. The side lane's playing cautiously enough that the Baron is going to be enough to get onto these turrets. Someday's going for it, though. Someday has ghosted, and he is after Jenkins. The Narbar can't charge in time, and Someday <laughs> gets his kill. Closer just watching there, throwing up the emo to like, the yeah, sideline. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Closer's number one someday fan. He's like, woo, get him. Stop, yeah. stop that Yordle. <laughs> well, the Yordle has been stomped into the ground. Jenkins dead for the next 30 seconds. Someday just continuing to keep things pushed up down here in bottom lane. Yeah, Closer and contracts are trading back and forth a little bit in the jungle. It doesn't matter a whole lot because mid lane, tier three turret, under siege, FBI nearly killing that one off. And boom, there's your lantern from Huhi to pull him to safety immediately. Palafox nearly killed up there in top lane as Abadaga chases him away from the turret. Had to use the Victor ulti too. Mid lane tier three still with just barely half a hit on it. FBI can step up back door protection or not. That thing is dead. 100 Thieves will break the inhibitor turret line there in mid lane with their Baron. And now everybody resets. The last little bit of the buff is going to wear away. So our Baron power play ends up at plus almost 4,000 gold with the base defenses broken open and an overall 6,500 lead for 100 Thieves. 10 seconds till next drink. Yeah, they're about to break CLG themselves, Flowers. This, yeah. this one is crushing as we're leading up to this pinnacle of a dragon fight. Three seconds left, 100 Thieves already on it. So CLG, it's gonna be really rough for them to move in towards the Dragon. They're just gonna have to go head first. It's already gone, 100 Thieves have done it. They've got themselves the soul. And now Contracts once again tries to get away. He'll escape for now. Someday's tanking up everybody. Surely the Trindamir is gonna die here or surely not. Someday gets away, but Luger won't. Poom jumps over the wall, trying to get away there with that Abyssal Voyage, but now the shield keeps him alive only a moment longer. Poom will burn down to Huhi to nothing. 
100 Thieves taking the Drake, taking the Soul, taking the fight. And if they have their way, they're taking the game. Yeah, the Cloud Soul Trindamir Ultimate on display right as soon as they get it, Flowers. Someday gets out and 100 Thieves get in the CLG base. First inhibitor's down, second inhibitor, it's right there. Why not take it out too? 100 Thieves going for the throat on this one. Still 10 seconds on both bottom laners of CLG. Now you've got Closer looking to make a move yet again here. Who's it going to be? Nope, just jumps right on back. Still no Dragon's Rage, but it still doesn't matter. Jenkins in the middle of four. Jenkins doesn't stand a chance. Palafox gonna get farmed up next. FBI's still alive. Double kill to the AD carry and a dub to the 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves right back on track. This game controlled from the very beginning. Looks so clean in all of their picks. Get one pick, boom, there's dragon number two. Another pick, there's a kill on top lane. Another pick, that's dragon number three. Moving it ahead effectively at each stage here. Honestly, 100 Thieves they are still looking at a lot of the, the top teams at the top of the standings, kind of building towards those really big matchups. But it's important to take care and clean up yeah. some, some of these, you know, quote unquote, gimme games as well. They really need to solidify some consistency with this team. This game's going to go a long ways in those ends. Yeah, there was a couple of good moments for CLG where Poom was able to get some solid, uh, some solid saves. Right? Like, you know, the Tom Kench, there was a couple of clutch moments there. But I never really felt like it looked dangerous for 100 Thieves in this game. They kept control. They never did anything to YOLO. They were able to recognize, hey, give up the Drake here, no big deal. Even on the Baron call, backing away from that and then shadowing someday instead, leading to a better Baron fight afterwards. The comms felt clean. The game felt clean. Well played to 100 Thieves. And I also just love this, this story of Trindamir for someday. Mm -hmm. he, he's emerging as one of our Trindamir gods here in, in the North America. Someday LCS. being good at something in top lane, no <laughs> way. Honestly, it's no way. refreshing too because I know that there have been lots of changes that where designers have been trying to get split push back into the meta and back into the game and, and not always have all these games be team fights and dragon stacking and stuff like that. And so it's cool to see some of those incorporated in some of these LCS games and... Hunter Thieves definitely one of the best at doing it with the Trinomir specifically for that pick. Oh, yes. Well, on the other side of the break, who he's going to join, Latigris, for our Verizon post-game interview. 